Aquaman 2 marks the end of the failure that was DC's Snyderverse. But now Zack is trying his hand at the world of Star Wars with Rebel Moon, and it just got worse. And here we go. <laughs> Like gravity, all it takes is a little push. What's up guys? How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Glad you stopped by. And if you're brand new, welcome. Grab a seat and stay a while, but do me a couple favors. First, go down and hit that subscribe button. Go next door, ring that bell. Make sure it says all so you know when the next video pops up. Hit that like button, and before you head out, drop a comment. And if you're one of the regulars here, welcome back for another round. I ask that you also hit that like button. And before you leave, drop a comment, because YouTube does love the comments. And of course, share the video out on all social media. Just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. I hope hope you guys had a great one. Got to spend time with friends and family. That's And here's looking forward to a brand new year. Oh boy. Zack Snyder. A filmmaker that one could say is a bit polarizing. That's putting it mildly. I mean, on one hand, you've got folks who criticize his cre creative decisions, and on the other, you've got the cult-like following of, of the man. Well, this past the, the, the weekend, we got so, something rare. We got to see the end of one creative vision and the beginning of something new. And so let's not waste any time. We're going to jump right into this very rare two-for-one review. And we're going to start with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, brought to you by Guinness, because that seems to be the only thing that they drink in this world. And yes, I do know that this was directed by James Wan, who directed the first Aquaman film as well. But this is the last of the Snyderverse films for, for DC. And two questions come right to the forefront. That is Amber Heard. And does this film preach the message? So let me answer those from my perspective. I'm going to talk about Amber Heard first. Now, Amber Heard, not the worst part of this film. Really? Well, that's a surprise. I know. Shocking. Um, she is prominent in the first and third act. She's not seen in the second act at all. But the time she has on screen, she's not insufferable. And she doesn't detract from the overall story. So there's that. Now... Does this film preach the message? Not in the way you might think. Um, while this film is absent of the feminist tropes that have been prevalent in, say, Marvel films, this film does go after those ESG points, particularly the E. Yes, uh, as a major plot point of this for part of Man Manta's plan to uh, destroy Aquaman and Atlantis, to power all his new tech and weapons and his new suit, he's using a very ancient fossil fuel that is releasing carbon emissions, ga greenhouse gases, and poisoning the ocean. And so, yeah, the true antagonist of this film is climate change. Oh, come on! <sighs> Aside from that, the film, this is not the worst entry of the Snyderverse. Um, there is also, along with the message, there's also a rather strong message that is very positive about fatherhood and family, so that is a refreshing change. That's not bad. Not bad. But overall, 
it's meh at best. Uh, another overblown CGI crap fest that is just indicative of the Snyderverse in general. So, with that, we can now say goodbye for good to the Snyderverse. Well, thank God that's over. Yeah. But now we have to talk about Rebel Moon, which is now on Netflix, and this is Zack Snyder's attempt to create a story, an R-rated story, in the world of Star Wars. Oh, fuck. A story that Snyder pitched to Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy promptly telling him no. No, 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 no. Thus giving way to the Netflix pro project, which is just every negative aspect of Snyder as a director. It's just dialed to 11. And make no mistake, this is not Zack's attempt at making a Star Wars film. This is Zack's attempts at making a Disney Star Wars film. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Allow me to explain. So the protagonist, <coughs> excuse me, the protagonist, Cora, is living on a peaceful farming community whose purpose is farming and fucking. No, they actually say, they actually say that. That's in the script. Um, she has the hots for the second Dario Naharis, and through exposition dumps, we find out that she was a product of war where she served in the oppressive totalitar totalitarian empire. Uh, when an admiral, played by the first Dar Dario Naharis, uh, threatens, the th threatens the community, Cora jumped into action in the first of way too many of Zack Snyder's slow motion action scenes. She then takes second Dario Naharis and goes out to recruit warriors to help protect this community, much like the Seventh Samurai, much like the Magnificent Seven, much like Battle Beyond the Stars. Uh, we meet uh, Terak, a long-haired prince who can talk to animals. Might as well just call him Tarzan. We meet Nemesis, a lightsaber, I'm sorry, sword the wielder, who looks like she stepped out of a Solomon Kane story, um, a disgraced general, and we meet a brother-sister pair who lead kind of a terrorist group, and the brother agrees to join a fight so girl boss sister can stay in charge of the entire group. And then we also find out through exposition dumps that Korra was the bodyguard of a princess with force resurrection powers and that Korra is also the most wanted fugitive in the entire galaxy. So, Korra is the girl who is the key to everything and is eventually going to have to find and rescue the princess who is the other girl who is the key to everything. This is kind of stupid. Oh, and first... Dario is into live-action hentai. Ew. So, final thoughts on this whole, whole thing. Rebel Moon is an unoriginal two-hour cringe fest, which, as I said, is Zack's attempt at not, at not doing a Star Wars film, but doing a Disney Star Wars film. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Mm. But at least the Snyder, at least the Snyder, at least the DC Snyderverse is done, right? But these are just my thoughts. I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Uh, check me out Friday. Yes, we'll be uh, Legion, Legion talk for Friday night's Royal Rumble. The last one before the new New Year. Always a, a lot of fun. Check check that out, and I will see you guys very soon. Yeah, and thanks for stopping by. But a quick reminder before you head 
out, out the door. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, hey, thanks for sticking around this long. I appreciate that. Again, see you all very, very soon. Have a great rest of your week and always have fun. Hashtag keep talking and always keep that smile on your face. <laughs> Toodles. I say you better.